Hello, it's Heather the Painter, and today we're working in Corel Painter 2021 with a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium Tablet with the pen. Now I have cleaned up Corel Painter 2021's palettes, so I have maximum screen real estate, yet I'm able to always see my layers, colors, clone source, brush calibration, and toolbar. I find that really important in case I need to troubleshoot or quickly look at what layer I am currently on. Now brush calibration is a constant reminder for me to calibrate my brushes as it's really important if you're using a Wacom pen. It keeps your brushes, if it's applicable, to being extra pressure sensitive or extra uh, expressive to your hand, um, depending on how the brushes are built. And most of them have a lot of either size or um, opacity sensitivity according to how heavy handed you are. So it's very important to keep this little brush calibration box out. Now we're going to go through some brushes that come standard with Corel Painter 2021 and I've made a couple tweaks to them but I'm going to just kind of keep it between the paper textures that are found in your paper selector up here in the settings tab either between artist canvas gessoed canvas and the one above it artist rough paper just to keep it very simple. I really like how those show up either on painting on fine art canvas or uh, fine art paper. Um, and let's get started. So in the earlier video, you can see if I zoom in on the cell phone image of my little one, I have over exaggerated the values. So I exaggerated some of the darks in her face over exaggerated some of the highlights and I left the midtones as they were because everything was just kind of a, a blur of mid-tonal range. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that and we had already saved it prior but to get started on your painting document we're going to go file clone. So that now gives me a document. I've got an untitled and then I have my original. I'm going to mount my canvas by getting clicking on Command M on a Mac or Control M for a PC, and then zoom in Command Plus or Command Minus. I'm going to go over to my Clone Source palette and click on Toggle Tracing Paper. So this opacity bar comes up, and I'm going to take it to zero. Now the shortcut for Toggle Tracing Paper is Command T, and you will not see anything change until we actually start painting. So. I am going to clear out the canvas, meaning I'm going to select all and delete it. Let's toggle the tracing paper so we can actually see what's on our canvas. My little one. There we go. That will make a great wall portrait. So we're going to select all, delete, which is command A, delete, and then command D for deselect. Again, that's on a Mac. If you're on a PC, use control. And I am going to do what's called grounding the canvas, meaning I'm going to start on a different color other than white. And I like doing this both in paintings and in pastels. Um, so looking at this, we have a warm base here and then a very kind of tends to go a little bit cooler, but then warmer again. So I am actually going to put a cool toned paper to balance it out because I'm going to have a lot of warmth in this image. So I find if you stick to a neutral, meaning it's in the gray section, I'm going to cool it off a little bit more there. Kind of go with the gray. Pick your paint can. Let's go a little bit cooler. I'm going to add just a hint more chroma to that. That should be pretty against her. That's a nice opposite to her very warm skin tone. She's more on the yellow range of the skin tones, especially in this image. So a nice complement to yellow is purple. And they will play very nicely against each other. So I'm going to click down here over on new layer. You'll see in Painter 2021, we actually have different new layers. We have new default layer, new thick paint layer, new watercolor layer, and new liquid ink layer. I'm going to start with a new layer, I think, 
and hopefully some of the brushes here are just default brushes. Now if you accidentally pick some other brushes that are only uh, native to these types of layers, it will automatically bring up the appropriate layer for you. So you'll see that under here on layers palette, pick up underlying color is selected. That is a good thing. That is your friend. And then we're going to start with a file save as, and I'm going to continue from, um, I'm going to borrow the original image name. And in the front, I'm going to put one PTR. And then at the end, I'm going to put prep. We'll save it as an uncompressed RIF file. And let's start out, we're going to pull the large areas out first. I'm going to get kind of messy and sloppy first. And then as we go uh, forward, I'm going to slowly bring back detail. So I'm going to make sure I'm on a paper that I like. Artist Canvas, I might reserve for more of the details. I'm going to probably go with Gessoed Canvas and Artist Rough Paper first. So let me start with Artist Rough Paper. And let's explore the Sargent palette. So in the Sargent palette of brushes, I moved my brushes over here. In the Sargent category, we've got a couple different brushes. I'm going to go with Blocky Background. And I'm going to click Reset so it looks exactly the same for you. And we're going to click Clone, make a stroke, and that's OK. But I am going to enlarge the brush. And I really want to keep a very light, whimsical, slightly heavy approach to this painting. So with this, you're going to have to constantly pick up instead of scribble, 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 scribble. Because it will literally just land on kind of one color and then drag it. So I'm trying to keep a slightly impressionistic hand here. So I'm not worried about her. I am going to just go for um, pulling in or pulling out front from cloning the background space. Now what cloning means is you are painting using the image. You'll see that my color wheel is grayed out. That means I do not have any control over the color. Whoops, that's select, undo. Uh, I am literally painting in the style of the brush using the image as my color source. So it is pulling all of the image from my image that is loaded in the clone source. And I'm toggling my tracing paper, which you see blip, 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 by clicking on Command T. Now this brush has a nice little dab head to it that kind of looks like a, almost like the start of an impressionistic landscape. And the texture will change according to your paper texture. So if we changed it over to gessoed canvas, you can see it's a little bit more scattered, softer. So let's go back to Artist Rough Paper. And what's really cool about this is under Dab Profile, you have the option to change the dab or the head of it. So I'm going to change it to the pencil profile. I want to see what happens there. I kind of like this. So I like the shape, dab profile, pencil profile. Anytime I can get like a chiseled head, I will change that on the brushes. Or if I can get more of the dull profile, almost like a filbert brush, I really like to try those. And you'll get an entirely new brush out of it. So I'm just trying to break up the background and give myself a little bit more of a painterly interpretation. And I'm constantly lifting my hand. Now if at any point you really like this brush, make sure that you save it by going to Brushes, Save Variant, and I would highly recommend labeling what version you save to this in because brushes are not backwards compatible, meaning if you save them in Painter 2021, they cannot be copied over to an earlier version of Painter. Just because Painter's brush engine gets updates or tweaks with every new version, and it may cause the earlier versions to crash. So what I'm going to do here is do this 2021 H blocky background. And that lets me know that this was only compatible with 2021 
and newer versions. I really like how we've got a little bit more of the cool tones coming out in the back here with the blues and the purples. And again, I'm just still cloning at this point. Now I recommend larger brushes for the background. Um, get messy with the background. It's a great place to really let go and let your impressionism, your abstract, um, you don't have to be super realistic. Uh, the brain will fill in a lot of information, especially for your background space. So the background is a great place to kind of date the brushes and get comfortable with them. You don't have to make perfect marks. Um, so that kind of gives you a nice warm up before you get into the main subject. So I'm really happy there. I'm going to go click File, Save As, and we'll click 2, PTR, Uncompressed Riff. And let's explore some other brushes. I'm going to try Sargent Speckle Sticky Bristle. Hit Reset. Now with this one, I'm going to try it at a low opacity, 10%. I'm going to take my reset, I'm sorry, reset at about 30. And then my bleed about 10. And let's see what this does. Now this one might be getting into too much detail for this. I might save this. Okay, I'm going to take my opacity to 40. Oh, let's go back up to a high opacity. So I'm going to go in and sketch with some artist oils. And I'm going to look up the real tapered wet flat. I'm going to hit reset just so it looks the same for you. And I want to change the nib on here. So we're going to go to dab options and we're looking at the heads. Now again, we can change these nice wedged profiles. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try this wedge profile right here. I really like what they do when you start painting large scale with them. And I'm going to make this a little bit more loose. Now, anytime you use an artist oil brush or a real bristle brush, you need to really set your brush calibration. So I'm going to click on my brush calibration box, my palette, click on this bottom right icon where it says set brush calibration settings, and then do one mark. Now I am going to go ahead with actual color and this might be too thick or too, I should say too close together, which is my feature. I'm going to boost my feature up to six. Oh, let's go up to nine. It's getting better, but it's still too close. Let's do 12, two separated. Let's do 11, almost there, number 10 much better. Okay. I really like this. So approximately 90 size, hundred percent opacity bleeds at 25 feature is at 10. And, um, this one I'm going to use to just start filling in. I'm going to click on the colors and just lightly swoop, 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 swoop. And it is kind of blending. It's a dirty brush. So it is lightly blending. Now, if we take that blend and we move it, it will become more heavily of a color brush. So if I take, if we look that here, if we remove our blend lower, let's go down to like 10. We actually can put color down but it still continues to blend out what it touches. So let's try that. And I'm not worried about going into the subject. I just want to get some background space established. So I'm sampling with the dropper tool D for dropper. I'm going back to B for brush. 
I like to use a lot of shortcuts. That way one hand can be on the computer at all time or on the keyboard and one hand can be using your Wacom tablet. And I also like using this brush with the Sargent brush, that speckle sticky bristle, because it's a completely different texture. Add some more blues over here. Change the size just a bit. Now if that wedge is too much, we can go back to dab profile and I'm going to try the dull profile. That lets me get these nice little curvy movements in. Bring out some bright greens down here. I love this teal color. Almost a cadmium green. I am pretty happy with how that's coming out. I want a lot of texture, a lot of brushwork, and then we're going to have to pull this all together. So let's put blend back up to 100%. That way we're not putting down any color, it's just going to blend. And go in and fill in the areas that we need to have a little bit more blendy. And I'm not going over every area. We don't want it to become matchy-matchy. If you're one of my students, you know I use that term a lot. That's become kind of our staple. Don't make it matchy-matchy. So I'm pretty happy with that there. We're going to do a file save as. Number three. And we need something that's a little bit more speckled. Something that will bring back more of that impressionistic look. Let's go to Real Wet Oil. There's a really neat brush in here that was called a uh, Terp Blender. And I'm going to use that towards the edges. And I don't know if you can see much, but what it's doing is just adding a little bit of turpentine and making it kind of watery. There we go. It's kind of adding a little bokeh. Bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. So you can already see this upper left is much softer, so it's almost pushing back. I may have gone overboard with the terps, so I'm going to undo a few steps. There we go. I went too far with it. We can just pause diffusion. Yeah, I used it a little bit too much, so we're going to hit undo a few areas and pause diffusion. Now I'm going to go back to Sargent with blocky background. And cloning closer to the subject, I'm going to bring in those flowers. Now what I might want to do is save this for another layer, so let's click new layer. And I'm going to change the shape, I think, on this. Um, let me do, I'm going to do a dull profile. Try to keep it sketchy in different directions. And 
Now, if you feel like it's too heavy, drop down your opacity. I'm pretty happy with that as a background space. So I'm going to go click File, Save As, number four. And then in the next video, we will start to build up our subject.